Today we're going to look at the Big Tree Tech upgrade display for the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro. This display will add touchscreen and color to your Ender 3. It comes in two different versions. There's the 3.5 E3, which is in the same form factor and layout as the original stock display. And there's the TFC 3.5, which actually has a completely different uh, form factor. So you wanna make sure you get the TFT 3.5 E3 if you want a direct drop-in for your uh, Ender 3. I purchased this from Amazon. I'll give you a link in the video description. As expected with BTT products, you get a little yellow ducky. We've got two ribbon cables. We also get a black cable, which is for the RS-232 serial. I've got that installed already, so I don't, you don't see it here. We also get a new encoder wheel. This one has a clear inside so that we can get the LEDs to show through. And then we have the display itself. It came nicely packaged. And on the back, we've got an SD card slot. We have a full size USB. We have a Wi Fi connection if you want to get an ESP Wi Fi. We've got our connections, and we've got also the serial connection filament detector, power, and so forth. So mine came with this little label on here, remove seal after washing. And this is not supposed to be on there because it does block the buzzer. But I find with this remove, the buzzer is too loud. So I have left that on there. Now we're not gonna go through the connection of this on all the different types of motherboards. I'll walk you through how to connect this to a BTT motherboard, which uses the EXP3 and the RS-232. But I'll give you a link in the video description where you can find another video that walks you through how to connect this display to different types of uh, motherboards. Many folks actually print out a cover for the original display so that you don't touch the bottom of the board. Here's one that's specifically made for the BTT display. So we can see here that uh, it's designed for the buzzer. It's got a little recess here for the encoder board. Uh, once you print this, all you have to do is cut out the covers that you require. So for the BTT board, you're gonna cut out the EXP3 and then the RS-232. Now for your specific board, just go ahead and cut these out. The installation is very simple. You remove your original display. We're gonna go ahead and remove the touchscreen cover. install that and then we'll place this on top and then you can install the original screws all right there we go You can go ahead and install your encoder wheel if you want to have the LED feature on. I prefer the Perusa style, it makes it a little bit easier to use. Now you cannot use the same size as what you use on the regular Ender 3. This one needs a size that's a little tight but smaller. So on the Ender 3, I printed this at 88% size. For the BTT, I printed this at 86.5%. So let's go install this. We have to line up the little knob at the bottom. There we go. All right, so for the connection, we'll just take our original cable connected to ESP3. We'll connect the serial cable into the RS-232. And then we just need a screwdriver to push it in. Okay. 
then you can reinstall your screws. Now that you have your display installed, let's turn the printer on. And what you realize is when you first turn it on, it says no printer attached. That's okay. It'll take it a few seconds to communicate with the printer. There we go. So now we see it's getting a temperature. Everything is coming in. And if you find that yours still says no printer attached, you can go under the menu settings, connection, baud rate, and you can modify this baud rate to what works for your printer. 115200 works for mine over here, but you see we've got a lot of different selections. So you can flip through, see which one works. To upgrade our firmware, we want to go to the Big Tree Tech Touchscreen Firmware GitHub. I'll give you a link down in the video description. Once we get to the repository, we see a lot of files here. Easiest way is just to download the entire repository by clicking download zip. We'll save this. Once you're done downloading your zip file, we'll just right click on it and say extract. And once we look at the downloaded repository, we see we have a lot of files there, including a platform IO file, which would allow us to create our own custom firmware, very similar to what we did recently for the Marlin firmware. I'll give you a link to that video. But really I find that for the touch screen, there's no real need to create your own custom firmware. You have a lot of options that you can put into the configuration file. So this wasn't really useful. Now what we want to do is we want to go under this folder here and we want to grab our firmware file. So we want this one. So let's create a little folder here. And we want our TFT35 version 3 E3. So this is the screen we've got. We'll move that over. We want our configuration file. And then we want to select one of these themes. The one that comes originally and the one that I like to use is the unified. But here's the difference. If we go to the unified, this is how the icons look. If we go back and look at the other themes, this is how the round miracle looks. And the last one, the hybrid red, looks like this. So pick the one that you like and just copy the TFT35 file. So we'll grab this file. We'll go back to our folder. Stick that in there. So these are the three files you need to do a firmware upgrade. But before you move too far ahead, we need to modify this configuration. If we come right to the bottom, it's got a section where it has our start G-code and G-code cancel G-code. So if we go through this quickly, we can see what we have here. So this is all okay, this is fine. Language, if you're English, you're okay there. Uh, this is okay, this is okay. These are all fine. You can fine tune if you, if you like, but really, these should be okay. So over here, uh, persistent temperature information. I like to switch this over to a enable. What this means is you will see the temperature of the bed and the nozzle on every page you go to. So we want that on. Yeah, that's good. We want it to be in touch mode as a default mode. If you have more than one hot end, you can modify that. Of course, we've got just the one extruder fan count. So all these are okay. You can modify your maximum build size if you have a direct drive or something like that.
Now we do want to modify our extruder speed and this is where we do our feeds. I found this was, this was too fast for the feeding. So we'll flip this over to 60, 80, 100. So slow, normal, fast. And then here you can modify your temperature presets because this will not use what you have in the modern firmware. This will use what's actually in our uh, touchscreen configuration. And you'll notice there are six spots. We'll just put three, even though you'll still get the six uh, spaces, but these three are the ones that we will use. These are all okay. We don't have any of these options. Here you can modify your knob color. You can add in custom G code for execution if you like. But now here's where we really want to modify this. So start G code, uh, don't really require that because we can put that into our slicer. Um, and G code, I like to put that in, in there just in case if there's ever an issue with the slicer. Uh, cancel, we definitely need. So we wanna say one, we wanna say one and then we want to put in our G codes here. So this is what I like to use for the NG code and the cancel G code to pretty much where retracting some filament, where uh, turning off the fans, turning off the heated bed, those kinds of things. And what I'll do is I'll post um, my configuration file. So if you want to use this or if you want to use this as your basis, you can do that. Just double check that nothing has changed in any later firmwares. This configuration file is from version 26. So before you use it um, you know, word for word, just make sure that everything seems to be the same layout and everything. All right, so let's save that. And then all we'll do is we'll copy these three files onto an SD card. Once you've placed your firmware files on the SD card, we'll come back to printer, we'll turn it off. will insert the SD card. And the firmware update process only works with the SD card. Don't try to put the firmware files on a USB stick. It has to be an SD card. We'll turn the printer back on. And we can see that now it's doing an update. The update will probably take about five minutes to finish. So first it does the firmware update. Now it's doing all the fonts and then it'll do the, the icons. So you wanna have at least three files on here. You wanna have your, your font folder, you wanna have your configuration file and the firmware file. All right, and the firmware update is complete. Having used this display for about a month now, here's a couple of things that um, I've realized. It looks like the display does a lot of processing that maybe we took for granted on the original display, but some folks have reported that their longer prints are stopping midway. I tried this with an eight hour print and a 10 hour print and everything was fine, no problems, but something to bear in mind. Uh, the other very interesting behavior is how this knob works. When we're in the touch interface, let's say we're used to using the knob. So we'll go here and we'll turn the knob to raise our temperature to, let's say 230. When we go back, what you'll notice here is somehow the speed has also increased. So it used to be 100%, now it's at 139. Now if I go back here and I reduce my temperature to say 195, I go back, we'll see the speed has now reduced to 133. And doing some research on this, it looks like Big Tree Tech says do not use the knob when you are in the touch interface. So just imagine the knob does not exist. So the way to do this is you come here, you modify and you go up and down. 
then we can modify our speed. Again, don't touch this. So we can modify our speed. Once you get your display up and running, you want to go to the BigTree Tech GitHub site and download the latest firmware and make changes to your configuration file. Unless you do that, this will not work properly. In my example, I canceled the print midway and I was surprised to see the temperature was still at the max temperature, bed did not cool down, and the nozzle stayed on the print. So you do have to modify the configuration and the firmware file to be able to put the G-code in that would actually cool down the nozzle, turn off the parts fan, do all these things that would happen automatically for you with the stock display. Now that we've spoken about some of the negatives and things to watch out for, let's talk about the positives. This display is very easy to navigate. And initially having used the original display for a while, I took some getting used to, but having everything so available to you and, and so visible is, is amazing. Also the fact that this display is color and will dim is very good if you have the printer in your bedroom. And we can see here, it's very responsive. As I go through, so almost like no, no delay. As soon as I click, it goes to the page. Very responsive, the touch is great. Um, and then when you're printing, you have the ability of now using SD cards and also using a USB disc. Another benefit of this display is that it gives us longer file names. So we can see here, we can now exactly see what we're printing as opposed to the original display, which gives you a very small number of characters. Um, if we go under the configuration, we can see that we have the ability of modifying some of the configuration right here without going into the actual configuration file. Um, and then if you ever need to do something back in the Marlin firmware, you just hold down on the display and you can switch back to the original Marlin display. This is how this actually used to, to look. Okay, I guess to get back, you have to hold down on the knob and then we can flip back to touch mode. You can see the, the buzzer is very loud and that's how loud it was even with that little sticker on there. So all in all, this is a great upgrade for your Ender 3. You just wanna make sure you purchase this from somewhere that has a good return policy. For example, Amazon, I'll give you a link in the description below. Just in case if you run into any issues, for example, if it's not compatible with your motherboard or if you find that it stops your print midway, those kind of common things that folks have been reporting. My experience has been great, very happy with this. And try to go back to the old display or a printer that has one of those old typical displays has been very, very challenging. All right guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more videos on drones and quadcopters and 3D printers.